So my dear friends in Christ, uh, we're back in, in the, the gospel according to John and the bread of life discourse. And this is the last, the last weekend that we're going to hear from, from John chapter 6 until, yeah, I think three years from now. And last week, because we celebrated the beautiful solemnity of the Assumption on, on Sunday, because it trumped, you know, the 20th Sunday, Sunday in Ordinary Time, we missed the verses that preceded this gospel, right? What, is, what, are, what are the people complaining about? Like, what shocked them? What saying is so hard that people actually walked away from Jesus? Right? And those verses that went right before this one, we hear the Lord really just doubled down on the reality of the real presence. He said to them, my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. And, and so then, like rightly so, like the people are kind of like, whoa, like this is, this, is, this is crazy. Like this is shocking. Like if you can imagine just like some, somebody just coming up here and saying like, please eat me, you know? Be just like, oh, oh, okay, cool, you know. But like, like Jesus has just been—he's been with these people, and he's like been teaching them. And eventually, we get to this point where they're like, "This is a really, really hard saying." And who are these people, right? Who are they? The people that the Lord has been addressing over these last several weeks in the beautiful Bread of Life discourse are his disciples, his followers, people that are choosing to be with him and are choosing to listen to him. He's not. You know, he's not preaching to the Pharisees. He's not, he's not having a one-on-one -on -one with, like, Caiaphas, you know, or any of his enemies. He's talking to the people who are like, yeah, like, we're going to follow you, Lord. Like, we, you know, we, we want to be called your disciples. And, uh, and so how do they respond? These people that are actually following Jesus. Um, well, as we saw, they, they, they walked away. They said this is a hard teaching, and they no longer accompanied him. And I think, we, you know, we're so familiar with this gospel, like in particular, we hear it so much, but like, put yourself in this scene. This is one of the, this is one of the saddest scenes in the, the entire Bible. Like Jesus is revealing his heart to his followers. And he's revealing this fundamental truth, right? Please abide in me by eating my flesh and drinking my blood. Abide in me. He's not throwing trivial facts at them but he's this just beautiful message from his heart. He's giving his heart to them. And, uh, and instead of just saying like, Lord, we want to follow you wherever you go, or they, they leave, right? They walk away. And again, it's such a sad scene because just like, imagine like it says many of his disciples uh, left. You know, just like people are just like walking away, like kind of even like close your eyes if you want to. Jesus is watching all of his followers just straight up leave. Listen to the tone of his voice, look into his eyes as he looks back at the 12 and he's like, do you also want to leave? This is, a, this is a sad scene, you know? And all of these disciples that leave Jesus, where do they go? Where do they go? John doesn't say they went off and then they lived happily ever after. They were just, they had an awesome life after this. Like he doesn't say that. He says that they returned to their former way of life their former way of life. In other words, they returned to the way that things were before. And I think we can hear that, like former way of life, you're like, okay, yeah, they're, they're doing the, the, the thing that they're, they're used to, like, like, that's cool, but it's just like, no, like the former way of life is a brutal thing. Like, they've literally been with the Lord Jesus himself, like he whose words are spirit and life. And so what does the former way of life look like? Their former way of life was a life without Christ. Like, that is, that is brutal, you know? I mean, it's just like, like they're leaving, not just like this ordinary rabbi that they discovered on the streets, like they're leaving the king of kings and the lord of lords, the savior of the universe, right? He who wants to pour himself out for us, that's who they're leaving. And a life without Christ, I don't know. It's like a taste of hell on earth, because Christ is everything. Christ is everything. He's not just one prophet among, among many. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is everything. And I think that's kind of what happens every time we sin, you know? Like every time we sin, the Lord is, 
the Lord is just like inviting us into his heart, right? Like before we sin, he's like, follow me, like, like rest in me, abide in me. Don't choose that thing. But then we just kind of look at the Lord and we're like, you know, Lord, that's kind of a hard teaching. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to go there. And so then we turn, we walk away from Jesus and we go to our former ways of life. And that former way of life is just not, not a fun place because life with Christ, again, is everything. It's amazing. Who is Jesus? In the words of Simon Peter, he is the Holy One of God. The Holy One of God. And I just like, I love the way that, that Peter, like in this sad scene where everyone's leaving, he has just these beautiful moments of conviction where he says, we believe and we are convinced, right? And maybe that's something to take to prayer, right? Do you believe and are you convinced that Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. Because once we believe and once we're convinced of that, why on earth would we walk away? Right? How could we? Right? He who is, you know, the, the, who has the words of eternal life, he who is absolutely amazing. Um, what is the point of this whole bread of life discourse that we've been diving in into for the last, you know, how many weeks? I don't know how many weeks it is. I did not do my homework there. <laughs> the whole point of it is, is that Jesus is revealing his heart to us. Right? He desires to pour himself out, to give himself to us. Right? To die on the cross for us and to say, I don't want to leave you. I want to leave you with my body, blood, soul, and divinity. Divinity. I want to leave you with the most holy Eucharist. Right? Because if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will live forever. And you will abide in me and I will abide in you. That's, that's everything. I think sometimes we're like, you know, what's, what's the secret to holiness? It's to abide in the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's inviting us into, right? He is, he is amazing. And so today at this Mass, let's ask the Lord for that conviction to say, like, like we want to respond like Joshua in the first reading, Lord, give me that conviction that I might say, no matter what, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Right? Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God.